And uh, so, when did you first move to Central Florida? We, uh, my dad was in the Air Force, and our family relocated here in 1962, December of 1962. And uh, what are your earliest memories of Central Florida? Well, um, in 1962, the uh, streets of New Smyrna were pretty much dirt. Um, the South Bridge was made out of uh, wood. It was a flat bridge with a, um, and it opened uh, clockwise, as a, you know, um, hands on a dial with a clock, uh, made out of wood and palm trees. And the South Causeway was lined with um, mature palm trees. It was a gorgeous uh, little town. So, uh, what are your most vivid memories of Central Florida? Well, uh, just that, um, if you ever look at the old pictures of New Smyrna, the old uh, oak trees and the Spanish moss, um, the old wooden uh, bridges, uh, just a small, quaint town that we lived here, uh, lived in. How did you become interested in surfing? or what interests you the most about surfing? Well, I have six brothers, and they all surfed. I'm the youngest of uh, seven boys. And uh, they all surfed. They had surfboards, and um, they would go off to school or uh, church, and I would take their boards, which at that time were about um, 10, 9, 10, 11 feet, which weighed about 40, 50 pounds. So, um, Quite often, the boards were just left on the beach. It was such a small town, everybody knew each other. And uh, they were so heavy, you know, it was, uh, they just left them down there. So I would walk down to the beach and I would uh, take Mike Martin's surfboard. You interviewed him a couple weeks ago. I'd take Kim's surfboard and uh, Tommy Reich, who we will meet next year, week. Um, but yeah, I just surfed, just surfed and uh, lived on the beach, uh, did a lot of fishing. It was uh, pre-jetties back then. Um, so going down to the inlet, the inlet was probably three times as wide. And um, just a nice small town coming from upstate New York um, in the snow. You know, uh, so we, a lot of sunny skies. So, so you kind of taught yourself? Um, I taught myself, um, my brothers taught me. Um, we had, a, between six brothers, they had six friends, you know, so there's a lot of people that, you know, took me under their wing and um, taught me how to surf, taught me how to swim. So that kind of ties into my next question, how old were you and who got you started? Well, I was um, about six when I uh, first started surfing. And um, the brothers, um, people like Mike Martin, Tommy Wright, um, Buddy Wright, the lifeguard um, team back then. And what interests you the most about joining the club? The uh, Safari Club? Mm -hmm. Well, it, uh, they're just a great bunch of uh, guys uh, we all have surfing in common, and um, it's just good to get together with an association, um, friends, you know, enjoying the sport of surfing. So, uh, what's your favorite board? Type or the surfboard? Mm -hmm. um, well, I have three that I surf. Um, I've got a uh, nine four Gordon Smith, and. Um, a 610 squash tail um, Orion that was made here uh, locally in Edgewater by uh, Greg Geiselman. And um, Randy Richenberg has just uh, shaped me a six foot fish, which is a, um, a wide, it's wider than most boards and thicker. And uh, two fins with a uh, swallow tail, very fast. It's uh, able to surf small waves very well. So the, the changes in the surfboards over the years, you've gotten to see that. So do you prefer the newer boards over, over the old boards? 
Did you ever go out on go out on one of your old on one of the old? Oh yeah, old time. Oh yeah, it, they're easy to paddle, for one thing, and um, they pick up on small waves, easily. So uh, the smaller the wave, the um, pretty much the longer the board for me. Yeah. So, uh, how much time do you spend in the water surfing, and how does that compare to now, from like the way you used to surf to the way you surf now? Well, um, three kids and a job, you know, will take you out of the uh, the ocean. Um, back when I started, I had nothing to do but go to school and surf, and uh, hit the beach and fish and uh, skimboard. I would, um, I don't know, skimboarding is just a, a piece of, um, at that time was a plywood, shaped into like a teardrop uh, shape, and uh, you throw it on the uh, the thin water at the shore. And jump on it and, and scoop down. Um, back then, I would literally skimboard for miles. I would take it from uh, 13th Avenue down to Crawford Avenue, which is you know about two miles, and then uh, maybe two and a half miles, and skimboard back. So in a day, I would do five miles on a skimboard, you know, and meet people along the way. Um, older people. My grandparents were here, so uh, I had you know. Um, their circle of friends also. And I would just meet people uh, along the beach. And um, so, and then I was in, you know, in my teens and I was able to surf quite a bit then and got into competition. Um, but I don't surf uh, probably a, a tenth of the amount that I used to surf um, even 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've backed off it. Um, there's plenty to do. I ride my bike and um, you know um, I like to go to the mountains Utah uh, Moab and ride bikes out there and uh, hike okay uh, what competitions have you well I've um, I was a member of the Eastern Surfing Association uh, in my teens and I surfed quite a bit um, in competition back then that was but um, once I got into the college years, I, I traveled to North Carolina and California, and I got out of the uh, competition and just pretty much searched for myself. But you know, the competition, ESA and the uh, uh, National Scholastic Surfing Association, they're good um, associations. And um, I'm still involved with uh, the support. And um, through my restaurant, we put on uh, Banquets and you know, charity events for them. Um, so, what locations have you and or your club traveled to for surfing? Well, I've uh, traveled throughout Florida, and then I've lived in uh, the Outer Banks of North Carolina. Um, then I've also lived in Houston, which um, Galveston or Surfside, Texas, was the uh, the surf spots back then which Galveston is right next to a ship channel, you know. It's not the cleanest beach and the waves aren't the best. So I didn't stay there long. I went out to California, surfed uh, San Diego, um, Encinitas, Lucadia area, and then back to uh, the Carolinas. I love uh, the Outer Banks, Nags Head and um, Cape Hatteras. Um, what types of conditions have you surfed in? Uh, you name it, I've surfed it. You know, um, it's been sunny to uh, hurricane surf, uh, big waves um, for Florida, for the East Coast, which would be um, maybe uh, 12 foot faces on, on a big day. Um, but primarily, it's just the um, the normal surf, four foot surf that we have here. So, uh, what types of wildlife have you encountered? And which would you classify as the scariest? Uh, that wild elk. In, uh, you know. uh, <laughs> you're probably talking about the uh, the shark, the marine life. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I've seen a lot of um, sharks out there. Mm -hmm. I've bumped into a couple. Uh, they've been around, um, and they're very scary. You know, just uh, the thought of uh, in the water swimming. With a shark, if uh, you know we, we have um, shock cords now, 
or uh, leashes that are tied to our ankle in the surf board. So if, if I were to wipe out, which I don't wipe out a whole lot, just kidding. Uh, uh, you know, the board doesn't um, travel to shore. Early in um, when I started surfing, if you wiped out, the board would be hit by a wave and go all the way to shore. So I'd find myself swimming 100 feet to, you know, 100 yards sometimes into shore to get the board. Um, so it's, uh, it, but that, back then I didn't think about the uh, marine life as much, but it's, they're making such big news out of it now, and New Smyrna is the uh, shark capital of the world, supposedly, uh, only for the fact that um, New Smyrna, Volusia County, is one of the only beaches that uh, actually keeps um, track and numbers of the shark um, attacks or incidents. Um, you know, there's, I'm sure if everybody kept numbers, the Outer Banks, New Jersey, California, any Australia, well, Australia, yeah, or South Africa, mm -hmm. yeah, but um, yeah, there's sharks out there, so it's it's always a uh, in the back of my mind. And uh, what injuries have you sustained while surfing? Well, I've um, I've been hit in the head a couple times. Um, injuries, a weird injury was uh, back in maybe 1976. The board flew up and the, the skeg hit me in the ear and cut the interior ear. And it bled profusely, you know. And when you start bleeding, uh, the marine life take note, uh -huh. takes notice, you know. But that was the odd one, you know, a skeg in the ear. I've been hit in the head or, um, you know, um, just hit, nothing broken, nothing major. Um, what impact has surfing had on your career? Oh, well, uh, quite, it's, it's been big, uh, being around the ocean. Um, it's a great way of life, uh, surfing, being on the ocean, being in the river, um, just being around the water. Um, so it's, the impact is just, um, I would say, a great way of life. It's, it's a natural um, way, um, waking up with the sun, um, you know, hitting the beach, the waves, you can't get any more natural than a wave coming in from another um, faraway place, right? And uh, then walking along the beach at, at sunset, you know. Uh, this week we had a full moon, so we, it, we noticed a full moon coming out of the ocean. I mean, that's, that's brand new. And it's, we're just fortunate. Um, what made you stay in this area? It's a beautiful area. People travel thousands of miles to vacation here. You know, it's a vacation destination. Uh, we're fortunate enough to live here. Um, it's just, it's a small paradise. Um, did surfing um, or your business play a part in this decision to stay here? Um, well, surfing did. I do uh, love to surf, and uh, I can travel uh, off to the mountains. I'd rather be on the beach. Uh, the business, of course, I have to, uh, you know, I've been in business for myself 30 years, and um, have worked in quite a few restaurants prior to that. But um, I have a job, and, um, you know, it's, uh, it's been good. It's a family business, um, so it played a big part. Um, what positive and negative impacts has surfing had on your family? <laughs> well, well, the positive is, uh, you know, it's, it's a great way of life. It's, uh, I've raised uh, three children, and uh, we spend a lot of time on the beach surfing. Um, it's a great social event. The uh, negatives might have been, um, I might have stayed in the water too long. Missed uh, some school, um, you know, back, um, might have been, it might have held me back in, in you know, the, the high school. I, I served more than I uh, went to school sometime. You said it's a, one of the good, good things about them moving to high school all the way over here. 
Yes. No. Uh, well, yeah. Uh, back then, I was able to surf um, prior to school and uh, ride the bike over the causeway to school or um, have friends. You know, we just leave the beach, shower there, and go straight. Um, so that was fortunate. Barracuda Boulevard was uh, very convenient. Yeah, and I had um, I had great instructors um, back then um, at school. Um, very fortunate with the um, the help that I got through in high school, junior high, um, back to my elementary days. Yeah. And I still know some, you know, keep up with some of my uh, teachers yeah, through the cantina. They come in quite often, yeah. and we're able to talk about the old days and uh, how I was fortunate to make it through. <laughs> you know, get get to college. So our, our our last question is: What's your specials today? The specials. <laughs> um, well, I would have to say it's a <laughs> good question. Uh, what do you like? Chicken acapulco, which is a, uh, I like it all. a bread, <laughs> bread and chicken topped with uh, sautéed vegetables, Meyer jack cheese, uh, black beans and rice, or a um, blackened fish quesadilla. Thanks for the plug. <laughs> yeah.